In this tutorial, I'm going to show you some of the basic things to know if you wanted to use raster digital elevation model and um, show the hill shade and um, clip the raster to uh, a size that's more reasonable to work with. The data we'll be using for this is um, the countries layer from natural earth data. And then I've also downloaded uh, uh, one of the tiles from the Copernicus uh, European um, Digital Elevation Model Collection. Um, and this part includes pieces of uh, France and Spain. It's a massive file, so it takes a while to download and a while to unzip. But when it does unzip, you'll end up with a folder um, that has that name. Inside of that, there is a TIFF file. When you drag this in, it'll switch to the appropriate um, CRS. And uh, you can see here we have, um, although it's not completely visible given the way that it's um, displayed at the moment, but we have France up here, we have Spain down here, and the Pyrenees. <coughs> Imagine now that we would like uh, to focus in on the small country of Andorra. I'm going to bring in the countries layer that I downloaded from uh, natural earth data. And then I'm going to filter this map so that it only shows uh, Andorra. Uh, I know that the country names can be found here in the admin field. And I'm going to search for Andorra in that list and filter by that. Now you'll see that I've got a, a tiny outline of the country of Andorra here in the middle of the Pyrenees. If uh, I style that so that it's uh, oh, transparent and I give it a, an outline that's a little bit wider, Okay, so here we have Andorra. This is a massive uh, four gigabyte file, so I don't suggest uh, f styling and working with large raster files like that. Instead, what we can do is we can create a new raster layer that is only the data that can be found on the inside here. Uh, if you look at any of these pieces here, well, uh, do it on the raster layer, you'll see that I'm getting the elevation information down in the valley, it's low, up in the mountains, it's high. Uh, but if I just want to save the area that's within the boundaries of Andorra here, I can go up to Raster, Extraction, and Clip Raster by Mask Layer. In this case, our mask layer, that is to say, the thing we want to clip this to, is uh, the outline borders of Andorra here. But I could have just as easily have created a new scratch layer and simply drawn a square by creating a new polygon, a new feature. Drawn a square and use that as a mask layer uh, instead if I wanted to include some of the area outside of Andorra. But let's use uh, Andorra's uh, borders for, for the time being. The input layer is your raster layer. The mask layer is the cookie cutter that you're going to clip it to. And uh, then we'll run this in the background. And quite quickly, you'll see here that we have a new raster layer that is clipped to the boundaries of, uh, of Andorra. It still gives us a square like this, but um, this is a much easier thing to work with. OK, I want to make several copies of this layer because I'm going to use them for different purposes. So I'm going to duplicate this, and I'm going to rename this one uh, the Hillshade. Then I'm going to rename this one, and let's call this the Digital Elevation Model. And I'm going to style this by changing the render type to single band pseudo color. 
If I uh, click apply now, let me turn off the hillshade for a second. You'll see what we get here. Uh, what we have now is that the low areas of elevation have a light color and the high areas have a dark color. Um, you can do whatever you like, but I'm going to reverse this here so that the, the mountains, the snowy region is white and the, uh, the presumably greener valleys uh, are green. Um, but I don't like the fact that uh, uh, the, um, there's so much of this map white. Um, you can go in and, and mess around uh, with the values here directly. Um, you can also edit uh, the gradient itself um, by relative position, which is what I think I'm just going to do here. Um, this is not a very scientific way to go about this, uh, but for some purposes, you just want to have uh, things shown quite nicely. And it's not too important, uh, the underlying data for that. Uh, I think I made it a little bit too far. Okay, so this, this gives me a little bit of a, of a sense of uh, uh, the valleys here. And you can see that it... Um, um, can be multiple. It can be modified in, in a number of different ways. Okay, that's very uh, a very kind of strong and stark uh, contrast there. If I turn this hillshade thing on here and go up to properties and change this to hillshade, press apply. Notice that it has uh, re-rendered our raster uh, using hillshades to show uh, as if the light is coming from a particular angle uh, and then producing a shadow uh, on the uh, side opposite uh, of where the light is coming from. Um, and then instead of hiding everything that's behind that hillshade, um, I can switch the blending mode from normal to multiply, and that will allow the colors that we selected earlier to filter through. Uh, before I start fiddling with the details here a little bit, notice that we get kind of a grid-like, I don't know if you can see it as clear as I can, but it's, it's rather boxy and grid-like. Um, there is another way to produce hill shade, which doesn't do this. If I click on my uh, my digital elevation, uh, elevation model and go up here to raster and analysis, there is a GDAL, a GDAL uh, method of creating a, a similar kind of hillshed layer that, uh, in my opinion, doesn't produce that kind of grid-like uh, structure. You choose the layer that you want. Um, you can modify some of these other things here, uh, but I'm not going to. And I don't think that this creates the same kind of box-like appearance, appearance. If I now go into Properties and again switch the blending mode to Multiply, um, I'm at least not seeing those kinds of left-right grids that I saw in the other case. Um, this produces a very stark, high contrast uh, kind of thing. Uh, you can fiddle with the brightness and saturation values and such here, but uh, I find that an equally good kind of outcome can be produced by just lowering the opacity of the layer. That softens the, the 3D appearance uh, somewhat, uh, as you can see. Okay, so we have uh, now a, um, a map of Andorra with uh, the topography of uh, the land, the elevations uh, shown, um, and uh, we can now call it a day. But uh, maybe you want to create contour lines uh, instead of having uh, just this kind of uh, colored appearance instead. To create contour lines, you just go up to Raster, Extraction, and Contour. 
and you tell it what kind of uh, distance you want between the contour lines. I'm going to say 100. I'm going to run it in the background. I'm going to close. And now it has produced for us contour lines uh, associated with that uh, digital elevation model. I can style those as a darkish gray, for example. And we get quite a nice effect like this. Um, in this case, we no longer need such a stark uh, color layer. We could then reduce the opacity of this a little bit to soften the appearance of our map a bit more and end up with uh, something like this. Now, zoomed out, this would get a little busy if you had a lot of contour labels. But let's imagine that we're zooming in just on the valley where the city of Andorra or the town of Andorra is located in this valley area here. And let's say that we would like to show uh, contour labels for this. To do so, you just need to turn on labeling by going into labels, single labels, and label it with the elevation. I'm going to draw a buffer around it that's white. I'm going to make the buffer a little bit bigger. And when I press apply, here you can see that it, uh, it adds these numbers. Just to clarify things a little bit, I'm going to concatenate this with M. So as you can see, it adds meters after the number. Uh, and now it should be should be quite clear. You could also make the labeling conditional so that it only shows the elevations when they are above a certain amount uh, or below a certain amount and uh, and do other things along those lines. And notice, however, that if you were to do this at the smaller scale here, you'll end up with uh, a really busy looking collection of labels, including these rather not so pleasant looking labels around the edges. So it's more useful uh, when you're zooming in on a particular area.